this is this subject is all about uh, the relationship between politicians and uh, cops and uh, how this is creating an environment of fear in today's india i'll start with uh, mr mahanta because uh, he has been dealing with one of the most exciting chief ministers and political uh, characters of india at the moment so how many times in a day you get calls from the cm to do this and do that uh i do get calls from the honorable chief minister sam uh but not to do this and not to do that most calls are pertaining to how about doing this is it possible to carry forward this particular mission uh, or something that i have given him an idea about he gets back to me saying that well i think i've it's possible it. to do an encounter that kind of questions because assam has made very good record on encounter killing since dr sharma has taken charge 51 uh, encounters and 139 injured 51 killed so the questions are related to that that whether this is possible to do uh, another encounter uh well assam has been uh, at it this kind of a situation like you know encounter you can't tr merely trivialize it you know you need to think about the insurgency situation that's been in assam for last couple of uh, decades i would say from 2005 itself the number of encounters that have been police has been uh, doing with extremist basically is to safeguard the integrity and sovereignty of this country primarily and if somebody is fires at you uh, we been like you know telling our policeman to fire back of course and not to accept the bullet but despite that fact we have lost as many as 403 numbers of policemen uh ever since 85 that doesn't give you the license to kill an innocent person who hasn't been of course who no. hasn't been proved of guilty by no. the court we are very cognizant of the fact that any action by the police personnel is subject to scrutiny by the honorable judiciary and also entire other bodies if a police person indulges in any kind of illegal activity like killing a person for the heck of killing or something then he or she is liable to be you know punished as per the law of the land and only yesterday i have signed uh, two number of prosecution sanctions uh meeting out punishment to the police personnel for having indulged in things like that and uh, i've been lucky uh, that despite having so many encounters since 2005 a sample is hasn't been held responsible for doing something wrong or killing uh, individuals that ought not to have been killed i'll come back to you on that note also uh, i'd like to come to mr pura kaista because uh, you have been in, you had been in charge of this state uh, you were advisor to the cm also what makes uh, west bengal particularly a violent uh, state i am saying this in terms of political violence west bengal has very good records in terms of probably crime detection uh, with uh, charge sitting and conviction rates are pretty good but uh, when it comes to political violence you have a track record of violence and in terms uh, if we look at the latest uh, ncrb data you are number 2 with 117 killings next to bihar in terms of political killings 2020 what makes it the state so violent well i think <clears throat> first of all uh, most of these are uh, media hype because political violence as such uh, it you know it is something which has always been uh, there is an attribute to west bengal which all the time it doesn't take place actually there are many killings which are based out of personal rivalry and many a times we find that it is being attributed to political violence <clears throat> and uh, to be very honest in our state whenever there is any such issue this is one state where every case is dealt with with the right kind of you know investigative procedures there are also sometimes you know people say people are not taking a fire which is not correct there is no such incident where a case where an incident has taken place and a fire has not been taken but at the same time let me tell you like we are actually thinking we are uh, your your topic is a road to reforms but you have come directly to politics i think reforms is also very because important because the yeah. reform is stalled <laughs> only because of politics in 2006 the supreme court ordered reforms and because of political will or lack of will it hasn't happened yet but mr koshik let me tell you uh, the we are probably 
uh, <coughs> taking this political thing with a lot, with a little bit of myopic idea. You know, police has so many things to do. There are so many things that we have to do every day. If you, if you, if I give you a, 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 a statistics, in West Bengal itself, in a year, there will be few crore general diaries. There will be millions of FIRs which are registered all over India. Every bit of these general diaries is the interaction of the police with the public. So those are the things which you, uh, we should look at. Police is uh, doing traffic duty, police is doing uh, festival duties, police is doing duties when there is a lot of uh, sports activities. Everywhere you can see police. We don't see that part. We are, why should we specifically focus only on politics? Yes, politics is one part. But then police is doing so many other things. Uh, and in, in, uh, not only in Bengal, I am talking all over India, there is a tendency to, you know, put the police on the, uh, you know, as, as a punching bag. It should not happen like this. Police also has a huge contribution to the society. And if you, can you think of one day when, if there is no police in the society? So I think uh, we should also look at the positive side of what police is doing. So nobody is disputing the contribution of police force to the society. But the issue here is that police is also doing too many things which are probably not mandated, like giving security to all and sundry, which is, which is causing a huge uh, manpower crunch. And uh, as you said, the reforms, these things are not happening. Many other things that are required, political sanction is not coming. I'll come to uh, Mr. Chakravarti. Uh, you had an interesting stint because when you were uh, Kolkata Police Commissioner, the current CM was once thrown out of the writer's building because he was holding a dharna. Anyway, you have worked under the previous regime. I was not the Commissioner of Police at that point of time. Uh, it, I found that record, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. You but are. But, uh, but you worked under both governments. You were yes, deputy did. commissioner, I believe. Yes, I was a deputy yeah. commissioner of police that time, and I yeah. really worked under both the governments. Yeah. Both so, under the left front as well as under the TMC government. So, so have you seen any difference in the approach towards police in these two regimes? And did you find any difficulty? Because at that point of time, the current CM was an opposition leader. And when you, uh, when she came back as the chief minister, did you see that uh, some kind of vindictive uh, approach or uh, any, any specific targeting. Do you see that happens in pol by the political establishment? No, I did not see any vindictive attitude, you know, when the former uh, opposition leader became the chief minister of the state. I didn't find any. But of course, you know, the total approach to the administration, that always changes, you know, when the opposition leader becomes, you know, uh, the chief minister of a state or the prime minister of the country, obviously, you know, there will be certain changes, you know, in somebody's outlook. But that apart, I did not find, you know, anything which you can term as vindictiveness or trying to find. But, you know, I think, again, we are digressing, Kaushik, what uh, Surajit was trying to point out and Mr. Mahant also said. Let's talk about police reforms. I can find uh, our Honorable uh, MP Shogotobabu seated here, another MP, uh, she also left just now. And I find that in your, in your uh, discussions, you have a large number of politicians of all the parties joining in. I'd request you, why don't you ask them that are they really serious about giving functional autonomy to police? Because that's, you know, what was mandated by the Honorable Supreme Court in the year 2006. And very recently, you know, a study was made on all the states of the country. And it was found that none of the states, don't talk about one state here, one state in Assam, no. None of the states fully complied with the 2006 seven-point directives ordered by the Supreme Court of India. If that is done, police is giving functional autonomy. I think the performance of police in the country, again, I'm not talking about any state, not state-specific, country-wise, performance of police will improve a lot. Your point taken, sir, but at the same time, in the current situation, the constitution and the laws give enough protection to a police officer who can survive without political interference. The problem is, that because the politicians, and that is the maximum punishment, I guess, can transfer a police person to a difficult area, most of the police person, most of the policemen, they try to cope with the political pressure or, or try to uh, go with the political will. Don't you think the, 
the, without even the reforms, of course the reforms are needed, but in the current system also, they are being, uh, they, are, they allow themselves to be used by the politicians. Not really, Mr. Kaushik, you know, what you were talking about, that could be true to, you know, one or two individuals. But generally, you know, we have to talk about the system. If the system functions, every single individual functions. So unless you change the system, you know, as a whole, how do we expect that one particular person will stand up? Even if he stands up, the system will not change. See, what was suggested by the Supreme Court, if you just recollect, that famous 2006 orders, it said very, very, spe very specifically, there will be state security commissions and national security commission. Where do you find those? Even if there is a national security commission, I find that, you know, in government of India, they have, con that they have constituted, but that consists only of the union home minister and government officials. What was thought of? What was thought of, you know, some kind of a buffer between the police and the politicians so that police can have functional autonomy? Because you must understand one thing, that police job, what, what's the job of police? Just, just one second. Just, just one second. It's about maintenance of law. If you talk about maintenance of law, it's a, it's a professional job. Can you ever imagine that, you know, the, you know, the Honorable Minister of Defense sitting in Delhi asking the army commanders about the war tactics? As it is not done there, similarly, I would expect the politicians, both in the state and the center, not to dictate police as to do their functional job. I'm sorry, I, I, I wanted to dig deep into this subject, but as we can see, it's zero, zero, zero. So we'll have to uh, end I'm, I'm, I'm this so discussion I'm so sorry about here. it. I didn't see but that. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining. Uh, taking the today. cue from where he left, I'll just come up with one thing. You guys refuse to see the silver lining. Very short, uh, very short. One so line answer. You refuse to see the, the Honorable Chief Minister Sam. On the first cabinet meeting of his, he had invited me to address the, or uh, to be there in his cabinet meeting, where he had told his cabinet colleagues, who were the ministers, in no uncertain terms, that ever from now onwards. There will be absolutely no political interference. India Today, in India today magazine has ever written since, about it, sir. Ever it has, since it has been, been covered, posting. sir. I agree, but Police. we'll have to end this discussion here. I'm very <laughs> sorry. But Thank silver you, lining you've got to see too. India Today Conclave. It is wonderful having you all here. Thank you.